So you have probably heard about a Raspberry Pi, I suppose, unless you have used one already. In summary, these are basically just small computers, but small I mean credit card sized computers. Plus these take very less power and are extremely cheap. I recently got one for myself to just play around and this thing can do a lot. So for instance, it blocks ads on all the devices at my home using the home internet. And yes, that does include my TV, so no more YouTube ads on the TV anymore. I know, cool right? Well this can actually do more and it does more at my home. I've just plugged mine in a room that is not active so it runs 24x7. Now people have this misconception that these things are only for developers, if that makes sense. But that's not the case, I've used one and although I am in that field, I think it can be used and set up by literally anyone. So anyway, the ad blocker thing which I mentioned before goes by the name of Pihole. It can be installed in any Raspberry Pi and with any I mean there are a lot of Raspberry Pis in the market. I personally have the latest one, the Raspberry Pi 4, but everything I'll be telling you in this video can be used on any Raspberry Pis. You just have to make sure that it's running 24x7. One more thing, I'm not gonna give you a tutorial on everything I'll be talking about in this video because I think there's already some great guides out there, plus I'm lazy. So definitely check the links in the description if you want to set up anything by yourself. So basically, uh, most of the advertisements which you see on the internet have a separate URL. And so what this does is it blocks that URL from ever reaching your router. I shouldn't really tell you this as someone who makes money from YouTube, but whatever. By the way, if you like the idea of blocking ads, this way I'll have something for you by the end of this video, even if you don't have a Raspberry Pi, so stick around. Number two, I also like to use my same Raspberry Pi because I only have one as in NAS for my home. Now NAS stands for Network Attached Storage and it simply does what it says. You connect an external drive on this thing and it can be used over the network. So in this case, I just like to connect my external hard drive onto this thing using USB, which by the way, it reminds me, this is a Raspberry Pi 4, which has USB 3.0. The other versions don't have a USB 3.0. So if you are into this, definitely go for the Raspberry Pi 4. So anyway, once I plug in the external hard drive, I can just install this thing called Open Media Server. And using that, I could set up that hard drive as a NAS. And boom, I can now use that hard drive from any device at my home as long as it is on the same Wi-Fi. And thanks to USB 3.0, it is extremely fast. Now, I personally like to store photos on this hard drive so that everyone at my home can access it. But if you want to store something like digital copies of movies, there's something called Plex, which you can install on top of Open Media Server, on top of both Pi-hole as well, by the way. And that can allow you to have something like a private Netflix at your home. If that doesn't make sense, it is basically going to scan your drive for movies or shows and stuff and simply add metadata into it like the movie's name, the cover and all that stuff. Flex also has an app for your phones and TV as well. Once again, the tutorial to set this up will be linked below. Third way I like to use this thing is as a 24x7 running remote computer. So for example, if I'm doing something that would require me to leave my computer overnight, like if I'm downloading something, I don't prefer to do that on my laptop. And so I do the same from my Raspberry Pi. Or if I just need to access a Linux computer, I could do so from my phone or from my iPad. So to make this work, I just have to install TeamViewer on the Raspberry Pi plus on the device I want to access it from, like my iPad. And that's all. Finally, my iPad is a computer. See Apple? Fourth thing I have installed on the same Raspberry Pi is something called Homebridge. So if you have an Apple product, you might have seen this app called Home in that thing. So there's something called HomeKit, which is an integration by Apple that allows you to control digital appliances at your home. The only problem with this is that it will only work with HomeKit enabled devices. So basically most of the popular Wi-Fi enabled bulbs or just smart switches that you see on Amazon do not have HomeKit. And so in order to make this home app by Apple work, you can either buy HomeKit enabled expensive accessories for your home, or you could use this thing called HomeBridge, which you can install on your Raspberry Pi. And so basically what this HomeBridge does is that it scans all the Wi-Fi accessories that you have at home and emulates them to be able to use by the Apple's home app. This eliminates my need to use any third party apps like this app called Smart Life. And so it's very useful. Once again, guide in the description. 
fifth and this one is only for developers but hear me out anyway you can use a raspberry pi and i do as well to host javascript applications on it so i have this discord bot called ob1 and i've actually hosted it on my raspberry pi the reason why it's safe is because unlike when you host something like websites a discord bot only sends data to discord.com and so it doesn't reveal my ip address to the entire world and so because of this i don't have to pay four or five dollars each month to my hosting provider just to host a discord bot nice on top of this, I have all these things running on the Raspberry Pi at the same time 24x7 and it doesn't have much toll on it. RAM usage is always low, CPU usage rises a bit when I am using the NAS but that's all. Also know that the power consumption of a Raspberry Pi is also not so much and so you can literally just set one up and forget about it. Now if you are going to use your Raspberry Pi as a remote computer or to set up NAS on it, definitely go for the latest one but for anything else any version is fine. So right before you go, if you don't have a Raspberry Pi and you were really into the whole DNS ad blocking thing, you can try this thing called AdGuard. To set this up, you can just go to the link in the description, copy the DNS address and then put it in your router settings. And boom, no more ads. I'll have a detailed guide on this thing on my Instagram highlights right there. And so yep, that's all. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe if you're cool or something. Bye.